Hey guys, D Mike here for another episode of Super Nintendo Sundays. Back with some Kirby's Dream Land. You may be noticing some inconsistencies and in potentially the amount of stars I had. It turns out that when you record stuff, that it's good to uh, first off be able to move when you're playing Kirby. That's strange. Anyway, when you're when you're recording stuff, it's actually a really good idea to have the game record audio. Otherwise. It is just a very sad, boring picture show. So thankfully, I was able to, well, I'm in the process of making amends, so no worries, everybody. And this kind of consistency, this sort of love and care is the kind of content that you'd watch from somebody that you, su you should support, maybe by liking the, the video, maybe by giving it some comments, subscribing if you haven't, telling all your BFFs, would love that. But anyway, we're doing okay here. As you can see, using kind is pretty kinda, kinda cool. Also, I should know better than this, because I've already played through this a bit, having done it with a, uh, a silent film variety in the first time that I did this. It's very strange though, because usually when I record these games, I do have a very stock method of the way that I do it. My setup is always the same every time. I'm always going to be using the, basically the same methods of recording and capturing of video and audio, all that stuff. But you know, sometimes you just wind up having a wet fart of a day and it doesn't always work out for you, but that's okay. We're diligent. Never going to give up on our recording. Makes me think back to the, the days of old when I was recording on a very crappy old laptop. And the most that laptop could handle was Game Boy games. And that laptop was very diligent and dutiful for a long time before it kicked the bucket. I got to the point where I was just about ready to call video making content creation quits. Was just about had it up to here. Imagine me pointing my hand to my forehead. And, uh, you know, that was a tough pill to swallow, but I was able to eventually come back and do it. I mean, I almost stopped recording when I was playing through because the setup that I had, my game had crashed halfway through and I lost all my save data, so I actually had to go back and replay the entire heckin' thing, so. But here at DMIC Industries, we're here about diligence, consistency, and disappointing, slightly shiny frogs. Such a sad frog. What do we do? Like, I don't, I still don't quite understand how we are supposed to be helping these these critters? I don't know if the game like tells you in advance how to help them. Like I know that it makes a certain little sound when you're approaching the thing that might create friendship for these people. They're very picky too, you know? Also, um, we prefer not to get sucked on by a shark. Not cool. So. We'll make sure that that doesn't keep happening. Oh, we're getting very close to dying here though. That's not cool. Ugh. Gotta be careful here. We are, we are on death's doorstep. Nope, and I wasn't even paying attention. So go me. Alkine looks very shocked as he should be, or it should be. Not entirely sure what we're dealing with there, but that's okay. Yeah, Let's Playing for me has been a bit of an adventure. And it's been something that I did for a little while, you know. I wouldn't say that I was on like the ground, ground floor of it, but I was pretty close to when it was in its infancy and YouTube was just kind of a wild west. It was a lot easier to get noticed back then. There wasn't quite as much saturation. So you could really jump back in and get going. It wasn't really tough to develop a following back then. It's a little tougher now. I forget to 
keep posting photos of myself outlined in white. That's my, that's my main hang up. I gotta get on that. I need to start, maybe I'll take a theater class or something like that to learn how to fake being shocked for thumbnails. That'd be good, right? Make sure I can properly enunciate when I'm telling people to ring that like bell or subscribe or whatever the heck people say nowadays. I don't know. I don't know. There's not enough time in my... Oh, goodness. What have I done? No. Okay. I mean, that was kind of cool, but in general, I'm not really a fan of Gooey or whatever its name. I think its name is Gooey, actually. I'm not a huge fan of it, but we will have to temporarily... Oh, okay. Great. We will temporarily have to abandon Kine as we continue to progress here. But yeah, it's been a bit of a trip for me. It's been kind of fun. I did have to give it up for a while though. I think, and this episode was not meant to be me waxing nostalgia or anything like that, but I think the biggest part of what made Let's Playing tough initially was just kind of the format of the way that things were back then. And what I kind of mean by that is I didn't really have the ability to really make content the way that I wanted to. I didn't have the resources necessary. You know, I'm seeing people out there with their fancy capture cards and, you know, their 720p recordings. Back in the day when it was cool to have a dazzle, that was kind of the, the big thing. If you could record your, your Nintendo Wii's your PS3s, your Xbox 360s. I wasn't able to do that. I think the most advanced thing I ever recorded was, you know, Super Nintendo stuff or Game Boy Advance, which I mean, isn't too far removed from what I'm doing now. So, you know, I'm not trying to make this seem like there's like an advent of, of an increase in, you know, technology. This is very good to have the stone power, but the one thing that I was always very upset about when I was making content is I never had the ability to to really make content the way that I wanted to. There's always some sort of a limitation, whether it was technological, mostly technological. But I didn't have time. Time was a big constraint too. You know, life just kind of gets in the way sometimes when you're trying to do stuff, especially when you're trying to play video games. And video games are meant to be fun. Making content is meant to be fun. And if you're not having fun, then I don't really see the value in doing it. I mean, for some people, potentially it's entirely monetary. Maybe it started out as something they were doing that was meant to just be fun. And then it went from becoming a hobby to being something that does have a financial component. And for a lot of people, I don't know if this is like a universal truth because I don't want to speak on the behalf of anybody besides myself. But I've kind of got the impression that if you add finances to something that initially is just meant to be fun, that there is a potential that you could first off disappoint this pink bird, but second off, that it becomes a bit of a burden. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe that is additional motivation for what you're going to do. But there's always potential for people to do things potentially that they're good at. I guess so that we're potentially twice in the same sentence. There are things that people do because they're good at them. There are things people do because they're interesting and they're fun. And sometimes the addition of money can convolute that process. And that's unfortunate. But what's not unfortunate is Kirby and Cat will leave Rick and Bird out for this episode. I really like Cat in this specific level because Cat has a double jump. I like how I just refer to it as Cat. I don't really know its name. Probably a super cool name like Gerald or, you know, Bartholomew, but I don't know what it is. I got nothing right now. But anyway, back to rambling. So also, um, just for a moment, does the ground not look like waffle cone? Like, does that not make you want a nice big bowl of, of ice cream? What's a good ice cream to have at like wintertime? Like what's a good wintertime ice cream? That's a, that's a good question. So one of the things that I do have the advantage of, because I have played through this, is this stupid puzzle right here. I can avoid it entirely. So it's definitely trial and error. There are these weird green goo monsters that if you guess the wrong direction for them to blast you into 
ice cream world, you have to start over from the very beginning of that location. So thankfully this trial and error part is already tried. I've already tried it. So less errors. And here at DMIC Industries, we pride ourselves on not making mistakes during Let's Plays. Consistency, high level gameplay, rarely misspeaking and misstepping. That's kind of what we do here, but anyway. I think the financial component, at least for myself, was something that I feel like kind of convolutes it. And, and um, if that's something that people do and they and they enjoy it and that's, you know, and they're successful at it, then more power to them. I think that that's fantastic. I just know that some people are only in it because they're chasing money and it can be kind of frustrating because then I don't know, you know, are you making the content because you actually want to? Or are you doing it because you are doing it for money now? It might come across as me being self-righteous during this whole ramble about the way that I'm approaching. It might sound kind of old-timey or anything like that. But I just know that, you know, I think people for the most part, and this is just kind of a general statement about life, is uh, if you're going to disappoint Waffles, do it with a cat involved, rolling you around. And do the things that you, that you can in life. Do them because you enjoy them, not because somebody tells you you have to or because you have an ulterior motive. Just try to enjoy what you're doing. So we have a boss fight here with Acro. I believe Acro is some sort of a, some sort of a killer whale, an orca, perhaps, that just loves ramming us. This is actually gonna be really tough to do. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and sacrifice myself here for a moment. Start with a fresh life. This episode brought to you by D Mike's Ethics and Guidance. So no cat, just one-on-one -on -one with Acro. But yeah, do things you like, you know? And be careful when when you're finding hobbies and things that you enjoy. Because there's potential for those things to get kind of corrupted. And for you to kind of lose sight of that. That's a little disappointing. That was kind of the big thing for me. That I did my initial, you know, first foray into uh, Let's Playing. I did it for about a year and a half. And I enjoyed it. And then all the additional factors of ulterior motives kind of crept in, you know? It's like, oh, you get partnered now. Oh, you have the chance to make money now. Oh, you're you're getting views and you are getting known and stuff like that. And those are the kind of things that I think are just kind of dangerous because for a lot of people, the, the reason why you're making it gets lost. And not to say that you have to make it because you like it, but I feel like it kind of helps. I feel like you can, I feel like I'd like to experience kind of the passion that people have for doing this stuff. I'm, I'm doing this stuff again, not because I'm trying to be anyone special, but because I like it. I think it's fun to have a creative outlet to play games, speak nonsense, maybe occasionally give a little bit of a word of a wisdom in the times that my two brain cells smash together in my head. That's what it's all about for me. But then, you know, you just gotta realize that everybody's different. People do things because they want to and however they want to, and that's just how life works. And also, the way life works is we destroy killer whales. Don't actually condone that. I've seen documentaries about that, that's not good. That was level two, which was barely anything talked about Kirby, but that's okay, because next time on Super Nintendo Sundays, we are taking on level three. Thanks for watching, everybody. I've been D-Mike. This has been Kirby's Dreamland 3 on Super Nintendo Sundays, and I'll see you next time. Bye.